Today on the Euro Express, we head to Poland, to Warsaw, in fact, where we meet Ivo Bender, an old friend of the Euro Express, who is EWTN's Central European man. And joining us this week is Stefan Thompson, a Polish uh, resident in Warsaw, but one who grew up in England. And uh, Stefan is a filmmaker and involved in the cultural renewal of Poland. So, Stefan, Ivo, welcome on board the Euro Express. Good evening, thank you very much. Stefan, if I could turn to you first. Um, you're, you're an unusual uh, passenger on this Euro Express because you straddle two cultures. You, you grew up in the United Kingdom, but you've now made your home uh, in Poland. How come? I mean, first and foremost, because I'm Polish. Uh, my, my family on my mother's side um, ended up in the United Kingdom in the 1930s and then was forced to remain there because of the... Uh, communist takeover of Poland after World War II. They remained in exile until the end of communism. Um, and I, I've always first and foremost identified as as Polish. And my father is South African, so I don't really consider myself British, even though I, I did spend the vast majority of my life there. Interesting. I mean, it's a well-worn uh, tr track that. I mean, many people, especially around London, have, have come from various uh, nationalities and, and go on to other countries. But what it gives you is a certain insight into different cultural milieus, if I can say that. And uh, you've decided to make your home in Poland, which at the moment, given its political thrust, is very, very different to, to what's taking place in the United Kingdom. Is that a fair uh, portrayal of the situation, would you say? I think clearly that the situation in, in Poland and, and the United Kingdom in, in terms of religion, in terms of culture, in terms of general overruling values is dr drastically different because Poland is a, is a still a fairly staunch conservative Catholic country, broadly speaking, though that there is a there is a shift coming in Poland. There is a the the rate of um, atheization amongst the youth is one of the highest in the world, and there is a there is a different cultural shift amongst certain certain demographics in Poland. But we are in very two very different places uh, in terms of the culture, in terms of values, in terms of religion. Certainly, would you would it be too much of a stretch to say that you that you can maybe point to the United Kingdom to your fellow countrymen and women and say that is precisely not where you want to end up? I mean, obviously, one one looks from the Polish perspective. One looks at the West, and there are many things that are that are admirable in what the West has achieved and what the West is today. It's certainly, the economic development is something that we strive to emulate and that we strive to copy. Uh, we're still, I think, a, a good decade or two behind the United Kingdom. Um, we're catching up with 27 years of uninterrupted economic growth at an average rate of 4.2% GDP per annum, uh, which has finally been stopped by the by the global pandemic. And even that, as the economic growth is is still the impact of the pandemic is one of the, the one of the sort of smallest in Poland in terms of economic shortfall. The predictions say that our GDP will shrink by about 1.1%. But um, I, I think I think the assessment in terms of culture, the, the the secularization of the United Kingdom, is a very worrying thing, and it's 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 obviously it requires a sort of in depth conversation as to why that is not a positive thing, why it's not a good thing. I think the very short answer in, is that is that nature despises a void, and that is exactly what secularization of a country does. Uh, a population that believes in nothing will believe in anything if one's sort of following the, the sort of basic aphorism. So I, I, I think, I mean, the, the work that I do and, and the things that I aspire to is certainly to keep Poland a, a Catholic country and a Catholic society, or at least a, a society that is entrenched in Christian principles and is, and is rooted in Latin civilization. Um, if we can't keep it Catholic, then at least keeping it culturally um, conservative in that sense, I think that's a very important thing and it's an important goal. And the shifts that we're seeing in the United Kingdom the, the transformations and, and some of the some of the cultural struggles that the United Kingdom is facing, I, I think the writing is slowly but surely appearing on the wall as to what a sort of 
unrestricted liberal ideology leads to. Yes. Ivo, EWTN in Poland is, uh, it's, it's, it seems like a natural fit. I mean, as Stefan is saying, Poland is traditionally a Catholic country. It's still perceived as a conservative Catholic country. Um, does that make the, the planting of EWTN in, in Poland a very straightforward affair? Well, uh, actually, uh, in a sense, you could say that, uh, that quite the opposite. We have launched in Poland on YouTube uh, two years ago. Uh, and uh, it has been a, a steady process, uh, I think, by the, uh, the end of the year 2020. On YouTube, we will have about 100,000 uh, subscribers. We're also available in a very limited uh, uh, um, scope of, of, of uh, traditional cable television. Uh, you know, in Poland, there are about 13 million households. We are present in 75,000. Uh, but we plan to, to, to grow it. Uh, so uh, I think the year uh, 2021 will be very important as a sort of a, uh, a decisive point when, when the baby uh, is, is turning into, into a, a more uh, adult figure and, uh, and EWTN Poland really spreads its wings. But nonetheless, uh, we have had some uh, very popular... Uh, popular uh, shows, and also we have uh, published uh, Raymond Arroyo's uh, uh, Raymond Arroyo's uh, biography of Mother Angelica, and actually recently, uh, when uh, when uh, President of Poland uh, uh, Andrzej Duda was interviewed by EWTN, and he was given a copy of this uh, of this book in Polish, and uh, I could tell that he liked it because I was. Uh, uh, a couple of meters away, and uh, and uh, so so uh, yeah. there are different things that are happening, and uh, and uh, for anyone interested, I can I can uh, I can tell you that uh, we have also our our basic show, if you can call it a show, is uh, is easy to understand for anyone anywhere in the world, and that is the twenty four seven adoration from. Uh, from the chapel next to St. Maximilian's Basilica, Absolutely. which incidentally is being watched by uh, hundreds of thousands of people from literally around the world. So, uh, yes, I, I have to say that the EWTN Great Britain takes that feed and it's one of our more, most popular uh, YouTube uh, uh, items that, that the uh, Holy Mass and also the adoration from Poland. It's interesting how Poland has become a kind of, uh, we're looking to Poland as, as a place for adoration and, and, and Mass is beautifully said. But you're, you're also alluding to something as well, which a lot of people I think forget. Most people think of Catholic media and they think of Mother Angelica, maybe even Fulton Sheen uh, as a sort of, answer, you know, the, the way in which uh, media has come from the United States. But you could construct an argument, Ivo, that uh, Catholic media really starts in Poland with the saint you've just alluded to. Well, I mean, if you uh, if you talk about Catholic media, well, let's let's start with the Gospels, you know, which uh, were written a long time ago. But of course, uh, modern Catholic media indeed started with Saint Maximilian, who first uh, was publishing a, a newspaper, which. Uh, before the war, used uh, airplanes to distribute uh, the typeset around several uh, uh, printing houses in Poland to simultaneously produce the, the paper, which reached about a million uh, copies sold. Um, then he started a radio station, which is still, uh, in fact, active. Yes. And then uh, in, the, uh, in the 30s, he started investigating this new thing called television, uh, and had it not been for the uh, for the Auschwitz concentration camp where he was uh, eventually killed by the Germans, uh, I am quite sure that there uh, there would be a Catholic TV station uh, in the 1930s in Poland, in the, well, in 1940s in Poland. So, uh, yes, that's that's one of the mm -hmm. things that he has certainly done. And Mother Angelica, really being from the same uh, monastic family as as, as Saint Maximilian. Uh, she really just uh, just just decided to continue his his work really Absolutely. so uh, Stefan are you aware of this uh, sort of heritage this media heritage in Poland yeah maximilian kolbe saint maximilian kolbe obviously is, a, is an incredible story an incredible man and an incredible legacy 
uh, that it is something that I that I am aware of. And and in fact, in a sense, that there is a modern day Saint Maximilian Kolbe. Uh, one of the very interesting figures in Polish media is is Father Tadeusz Rydzyk, uh, who runs the Radio Maria, and who who's a, he's quite a fascinating figure actually, very controversial. Um, but but the way that he runs and operates his businesses and the the, the way he he runs his media is is certainly certainly very reminiscent of Saint Maximilian Kolbe actually. Yes, e- Eva, was it difficult uh, because uh, with that sort of heritage that we're discussing and and the the figure that Stefan alludes to and Radio Maria, is it difficult to was it difficult to bring EWTN to Poland for the reasons you alluded to at the start, which is that you've got a lot of competition, but also it may it's sometimes seen in countries as an American transplant, and and not always welcomed. Well, uh, Poland is the most America-friendly country in Europe. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> uh, so uh, so that I don't think that for the majority of our, of our viewers, this is a, you know, a particular <laughs> concern. Uh, so, 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 uh, and in terms of, of competition, well, yes, people were asking why. Uh, to which I think the best, uh, the best answer is, you know, why come to Poland and start a new, uh, new Catholic media venture? Uh, And I think the best answer is to quote uh, a rather unpleasant uh, historical historical figure, namely Chairman Mao, who was famous for saying, let a thousand flowers bloom. Um, So the the more, the better. And, you know, there are different sensibilities and different angles and different uh, expectations among such a large Catholic population. So I think there is plenty of room for others and frankly i would also welcome with open arms uh, other catholic media ventures uh, uh, both in uh, traditional media and new media uh, who 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 want to to work in poland because uh, you know it, it's catholic means uh, it means what it means it means yes. as broad as possible so yes. uh, you know uh, yeah it's it it was at, at times there was some explaining to do but but i think people People now understand uh, the, the, the point. Would you say, Stefan, in your experience, I mean, uh, the UK, there's not a great deal of Catholic media, but obviously Poland, much more of a Catholic country. Well, is, it, is, it, is it something you sort of rejoice in, that there, there are different strands of Catholics engaged with the media, tr- with all, with their different gifts, maybe different charisms, different slants? Is that something which you see as a sign of vitality? It, it's, a, it's a difficult question. And it's personally, I don't actually consume any Catholic media, perhaps because I am a Roman Catholic. I, d- I don't necessarily feel the need to to consume any more. I, I sort of feel up to date, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I spend most of my time engaging actually with the entirely opposite media to get the other perspective. So I, I'm not necessarily. And whereas, in fact, one of the only English papers that I, I do read from time to time, or articles that I do read, is the Catholic Herald. Right. Um, so it, it's sort of ironic that I consume Catholic Catholic media from England, but don't bother consuming the Catholic media in Poland. I mean, th- there is vitality in 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 the in the Catholic Church in Poland, and I I also think that the the escalating culture war. And the the ever more clear boundaries and frontiers and barricades of that culture war will actually lead to a more in depth faith. I think it's been one of the main problems of Poland is the the of of Catholicism is that it's more cultural than it is religious. Mm-hmm. And I don't necessarily know if you want to have a vast sort of mass of of not entirely convinced people but people who merely go out of tradition out of habit um and, and that i think that the, the boundaries that we're seeing and the 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 protests that we're seeing at the moment around abortion and 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 that reform i i, I think the fact that there will be a pressure point and an increasingly pro- increasing pressure point on uh, catholicism and especially on young catholics where it will be difficult to be sort of encounter and and against the the popular mass, which 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 is dominating the narratives today, I I hope that that will not necessarily revitalize, but at least make people become more aware of their own 
faith, of the penance of their faith, of the of the foundations of their faith. So I, even if there is, I think, a difficult time ahead of the Catholic Church in Poland, I, I do hope that it will lead to something good. Ivo, Stefan's alluding to something there which um, bedevils a lot of Catholic countries, and I wonder how Catholic media deals with it. I, I'm thinking in the English-speaking world of Ireland, for example, where there's a lot of social Catholicism, but sometimes then, in terms of the politics and, and the way the laws are, are being made, it doesn't seem to reflect any kind of Catholicism whatsoever. Um, in, in Poland, is there a danger that you end up sort of becoming sort of almost like a heritage, you know, that, you, that you're, 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 you're servicing something which is cultural as much as it's spiritual. I mean, how, how do you actually break through that barrier and actually produce something for Poland, which is actually helping people deepen their relationship, not only to the church, but with our Lord Jesus Christ? Well, well certainly this is a very, a very real danger. And we, uh, uh, when we look at various... Uh, 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 you know, statistical and, and research polls, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, we see a, a, a certain declining uh, tendencies. Uh, however, uh, however, I think uh, what is usually uh, omitted is that yes, the mass attendance or the uh, the, the dominicantes uh, number has dropped, uh, not precipitously, but has dropped. However, among those, those who actually uh, uh, take communion increased. So the communicantes is up, which can be then construed to mean that people are taking, those who stay in the church take it more seriously, which you know, corroborates what, what Stefan is saying. Yes. Uh, and, and how to deal with it? Well, uh, I think if the message is not reaching uh, the addressee of the message, it is not the uh, the problem of the addressee, it's the problem of the messenger. So mm -hmm. we need to work on the, yeah, it, it, we need to work on our message and we need to hone it, we need to, to, to make it more understandable without, of course, shedding uh, any of its essential, uh, uh, essential tenets. Uh, and um, I think there are many examples of that, uh, not just in Poland. Uh, uh, I think there is, a, for, for instance, a fantastic uh, Catholic television station in Bratislava in Slovakia called TV Lux, which is a very traditional Orthodox Catholic station, which is extremely well developed in terms of the, uh, uh, the, the, the shall we say, visual and cultural uh, image and message that is much more easily digestible for for the for the modern viewer and i think this is the direction in which we uh, many of us should strive for of course there is a there is a uh, there is a group of very traditional catholics who don't uh, like anything that has has been uh, invented before the 14th century and i'm extremely fond of them uh, but there are those who uh, who prefer to live in 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 the 21st century. So, with, with, without passing any judgment on on either on either group. Evo, part of your remit, uh, I mean, you, you, you live in Poland, obviously you're dealing with Poland, but part of your remit in, in EWTN is, is a number of European countries, including uh, Sweden and Holland, or the, the low countries, um, which, um, I mean, the low countries, some of them traditionally have been Catholic. Sweden, a long time, uh, has been Lutheran and is now very secular. I mean, how do you see the challenge different in, in a country like Sweden? And I wonder if it's actually maybe easier starting a Catholic network in a country like Sweden because there isn't anything else and there are so few Catholics, it's easy to get a consensus, unlike Poland. Well, uh, in a sense, yes. You know, if you are, uh, if you are completely uh, on the margins of, of, of society, uh, in a sense, that affords you more freedom. <clears throat> so, so yes, in a certain paradoxical sense, yes. Uh, but um, Sweden is a very interesting, a very interesting, uh, should I put, how should I put it, a case. It's a very interesting case. Because, as you said, it is a very secular country, uh, which has been uh, very adamant in the uh, persecution of Catholics up until the 19th century. 
Uh, and uh, uh, today, however, we have uh, in the Cardinal uh, Arborellius, in Cardinal Arborellius yeah. of, of Stockholm, the first Swedish-born bishop of Stockholm, and the first since the Swedish since the Reformation, and yeah. and the first cardinal ever from Sweden. And in fact, there are about a hundred Swedes converts, Swedes converting to Catholicism every year. There were uh, full full Protestant convents that that uh, uh, moved to Rome, so to speak. Uh, and you have an influx of uh, immigrants from exactly the Catholic Church. So if you go to Mass in Stockholm, in the cathedral, which is full on Sundays, you have Swedes, you have uh, Croatians, you have Latin Americans, you have Asians, you have Africans. It is truly a, a picture of a global Catholic church uh, and that's where they come home and of course many of them in order to uh, uh, blend in mm -hmm. within the, 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 the new, new, new homeland that they chose uh, 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 shed their Catholic traditions and Catholic beliefs but by, uh, by no means I, 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 do I think it's a, it's a majority. I think the Catholic, the Catholic identity helps the newcomers in Sweden remain who they are. Now there's there's something about Poland uh, today that, that uh, the Polish, as you as you alluded to there, Evo, there's many Poles who have emigrated to Scandinavia, but there are very many Poles who have emigrated recently to the United Kingdom. Uh, Stefan, you, you you talked about your family in the 1930s. A lot of Poles came after the war or stayed in Britain after the war because of the communist takeover of their country. They had fought here in the Free Free Polish uh, Legions that, that had helped to liberate Europe. In fact, many of them had fought in the Battle of Britain, which is not well known. Um, that uh, immigration, that, that sort of European immigration, uh, has changed London, changed Britain to some extent, it has made it more Catholic. And I'm wondering in Poland how aware the average Catholic Pole is that in, in London today you will, you will come across many new churches that were formerly Anglican that are now very much Polish and very much Catholic. And I, I, I see this as a kind of uh, wonderful way in which the movements of peoples around Europe can sometimes bring very healthy uh, and very well needed recruits to the Catholic Church here in England. I mean, are, are, Stefan, are you, con are you conscious of that given, given your sort of ability to move between the cultures? No, I was aware of that. I, I think there's a sort of an amusing allusion to a, a sort of peaceful counter-reformation. Um, no, I, I don't know how aware people are of that, of that in, in Poland itself. Uh, I, I think amongst the youth, generally speaking, that there, there, there is, um, there, the youth tends to be counter-cultural. In, in in two senses. So what what we're faced with is in essence on one hand youth that is turning further right and is sort of entrenching itself in the faith on on the sort of widely understood right, political right. And conversely what you have is you have a a countercultural movement against the current conservative establishment that's in that has political power. And you're, you're seeing a kind of radicalization and, and in essence, a copying of Western trends. So we have sort of the Polish version of Black Lives Matter, despite the fact that Poland never had any colonies. And there's no, there's no police brutality, well, certainly no police brutality against, against Polish Africans, because there's simply not sufficient numbers of them. And the police in Poland is a, such a peaceful place that the police brutality is a, is a completely unknown phenomena. Or, I mean, obviously, there are cases of some police overreach, but, but getting shot in the street by a police officer is, is your chances are slim to none. But you do have those trends of, of very left wing and radicalizing people. And I think that's just an element of youth. And I think that's kind of where youth has always been countercultural and always will be and will always be rebelling against the establishment one way or the other. Do you think that, um, I mean, in the UK, there is that sort of radicalization of youth and there always has been, but it's, it tends to have been political. Uh, and to be, to be honest, it tends to be more left wing than right wing. Uh, but 
it rarely has a religious taint or religious uh, flavor to it in, in the United Kingdom. But would you say in Poland that that the that countercultural what you're describing there amongst youths that there's something attractive about the the historic Catholicism of their homeland that 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 they that the youth of today are grasping. Absolutely, I, I think you can see that with the number of young men who attend Latin Mass. Um, Pre-Vatican II Catholicism is is uh, and the 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 highly ritualized and, and visually beautiful, and the the incredible chants and the hymns and the and the 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 palpable sacrum of of the Latin Mass. Uh, and that's and in fact I've seen that in the United Kingdom as well. I've seen that in in the Brompton Oratory, for example. Yes, there, there is interest in it. Um, so I, I I think there is a there is a religious tent, and it goes both ways because in fact there is also conversely, there is a segment of the youth that has a deep understanding, admiration, and and respect for 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 the Catholic Church. And on the other hand, you have the youth that is that is basically turning against it, and the, their messaging and their way of expressing it, and uh, th their radicalism is is also, I think, linked in essence to the to the strength of the Catholic Church. The the hatred for it is that much stronger because it still wields influence, because the country is still Catholic, because most of the parents and grandparents, or at least grandparents, are are, are Catholic. Uh, the, the the real problem that we face, and I think that the thing that really ought to be discussed, and I sort of you didn't ask the question, well, I'll answer it myself anyway, and I, I think answer a lot of what what Evo deals with, it is in essence what we what we're faced with is we're faced with a messaging problem, the the left and the postmodern and liberal left pr presents an incredibly appealing message, and it's an it's an incredibly powerful and and strong promise and it's effectively the, the promise of absolution of all of your sins you 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 you're, you have no responsibility for your actions you you have only rights you have privileges and you're stripped away from any duty and responsibility and as catholics and as broadly speaking conservative conservative catholics what, what we need to present is we need to package our conservative message of of a on one side the, the truth that that being obviously the, the truth of the catholic church but on the other on the other hand, we, we, we need to present the values of that lifestyle and more broadly a conservative lifestyle. And and that is why why is taking responsibility for what you do? Why is that in the long term a more attractive lifestyle than that which the left is presenting? And and, the, and I think that lies at the very heart of the struggle that we're facing. And, and it's very the protests that are taking place in Poland today, I think, are very symptomatic of that. And the, the left and the anti-Catholic left particularly, is definitely winning that messaging battle and is winning hearts and souls. So, Stefan, if we take that, Evo, I mean, w I, what's your response to that? I mean, is, is, is e EWTN in the vanguard of this, this reshaping and a positive messaging to people of all ages? Well, globally, for, for sure. There is no question about that. Uh, in Poland, we are uh, still uh, too young. Uh, our reach is not that great. Uh, I think our most viewed video on YouTube uh, recently crossed the 300,000 views threshold. Okay, so is it a lot? Perhaps it is a lot. It's not 30 million. There are 38 million people in, living in Poland. Uh, so, but uh, but yes, and um, the, the general description that 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 Stefan offered is uh, is very true and. Uh, uh, this is a very, uh, let's put it this way, a conversion is a very personal matter. And okay. if a medium can find a way to reach that individual and to think about the individual who's watching, who happens to be watching for some reason, something that he doesn't agree with, um, unless we manage to craft this sort of a, uh, a, a means of, of communicating the good news to that particular person, uh, we will fail, yeah? because uh, we are not a mass medium. That's 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 a different thing. We we are not appealing to a demographic. That's mm -hmm. not what we want to do. We want to reach a person, an individual who has, you know, problems. 
complexes, uh, past experiences, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, so that there, therein, therein lies the the, the key. But it's uh, much easier said than done. Uh, just uh, sort of uh, anecdotically, uh, there was a situation apparently when uh, uh, when uh, which was described in in, in the states when uh, a person who was very terminally sick rolled in her bed and incidentally turned on EWTN and there was Mother Angelica saying, you have to go to confession. <laughs> and it worked. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me, it, it worked. So uh, yes. you just need to reach that person at that moment. Well, yes. I mean, could, if I could pick up on something you said, Stefan, about um, the, uh, the attraction for people of your, your age, I'm assuming you're a millennial or you know, people in their 20s and 30s, with, with the, the, the mass that predates the Vatican Council, you know, the Tridentine, Old Rite, it goes under various names. Um, what do you think lies behind that? And, you know, some people have said, well, it's a kind of nostalgia for something that they never experienced. No, uh, no, yeah. it's not. I, 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 and I say this to, to answer the question in a, in a personal manner because I, I go to Latin mass the reason is 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 i think there's been a we we live in a world where the the cultural sexual and political revolutions that have occurred since the 1960s and since postmodernism has become a, a fundamental ideological underpinning of liberal democracy we live in a world that has been stripped of any holiness that there is it's very difficult to to actually touch something that is clearly sacred in a in a palpable way the the latin mass is is a return to that it, it's it's the 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 post vatican ii rites that have, were introduced obviously are much more accessible much more easily understood but in essence they i believe personally i think they take away from some of the 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 putting it in in secular terms they they take away from some of the magic obviously that's not it's a very secular word but i i think i think a lot of the the issue of our messaging is that we we sometimes don't use the language that is being used but there is that feeling that this is something holy and that you are participating in a in a great mystery and the it's it's funny because now that you've asked me the question, it's very difficult to explain because you're dealing in in it with with such great things that they kind of finding the right words to explain them is actually yeah. But you see what I mean. Right? I, I yeah. I mean I I I do. Um, but I I wonder, Evo, uh, as a Catholic broadcaster, I mean you've heard Stefan, and and I mean it's not a phenomena unique to Poland. It's the same in the UK and in France and in the United States where there is a kind of phenomena, and I, and I, and I use the word without, without any, you know, just it is, it is what it is, that many young people, very young people, are attracted to mass in, in the pre-1962 uh, rites and, uh, and continue to be in great numbers. And, and it's not just a rite they're attracted to, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Stefan, but it's also a kind of a counter-cultural lifestyle that, that it sort of is the bedrock of. And, and I wonder as a Catholic broadcaster, how do you kind of situate yourself in that debate? Because uh, you may have a demographic, EWTN has a demographic where there's generally older people are watching it who quite like the mass as it is. But you, if we're going to, I mean, it seems rather odd that we're, we're now saying if we're going to attract millennials, we're, we need more Tridentine masses, more Latin masses, more sort of uh, getting in a time machine and heading back to the 16th century. How do you, how do you, how do you respond to that, Evo? Oh, just on, on a personal note, I was, I was in, uh, uh, in uh, Trident uh, just about a month ago. Uh, for the first time, so that's uh, uh, and I, I stayed literally next to the to the cathedral, and there was a, a film festival, a re religious film festival there. Uh, but uh, uh, well, yes, it is it is something that is literally a phenomenon that that goes uh, exactly everywhere in 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 the Catholic Church. Uh, uh, yes, there is this uh, longing for for sacrum as 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 stefan said which is more 
you know, again, from my own personal experience, which is more, uh, more readily recognizable. Hmm? To some people, again, we are talking about different sensibilities, but yes, there is a there is a growing number. And uh, well, uh, right now, if we want to talk about concrete things that happen in EWTN Poland, we have uh, uh, um, a great um, uh, uh, program which is uh, uh, Swiss Dominicans who, who who basically teach Gregorian chant. All right, and uh, and also. Uh, and also, about a month ago, we had the first transmission of the uh, Holy Mass in Latin at Novus Ordo from the from the miraculous chapel uh, in 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 Jasna Góra that went worldwide. And um, and I think that uh, uh, I'm not really uh, revealing any secrets, but we're also working uh, uh, on 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 bringing some more of the uh, traditional uh, traditional liturgy. Uh, to to EWT and Poland, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. And, and as as is the case in Great Britain, surprisingly, you know that uh, that there is a demand, there is a, there are people asking for this. Stefan, your your profession is as a filmmaker, and um, it's interesting that um, from for many Catholics, uh, certainly Catholics, traditional Catholics, they they very much see the Mass, the old Mass, as as a bedrock for a new cultural renaissance. Uh, do you see your filmmaking in, in that light? I mean, it's 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 quite a, a leap from sort of the the old right mass to to YouTube and to the whole social media thing. But but there are certain people, including yourself, actually actively involved in in in, in bridging that sort of divide. I wouldn't necessarily say I bridge the divide because none of the content I make is religious per se. That the messaging behind it is very often rooted in Catholic teaching. Which, which stripped to a sort of secular vision of is merely take responsibility for what you say and do. I think in essence, Catholicism, if it was stripped away from any religious, from any religious elements, if one had to sort of present it as a, as a political ideology, it, it would in essence be stripped down to, to, to that. Um, I, I think the, the, the tools that, are, that we are being provided with, the modern world has provided us with, on one hand, definitely leads to some forms of, of mass degeneration and to, they've contributed, I think, definitely to very strong elements of social decline. Now, I, I think, for example, you, you see it on, on Twitter, for example, where the limitation in characters has, has led, in my opinion, to people being much ruder than they would be otherwise, mainly because points are that much more concise. Yes. Uh, again, it's a it's similar concept with YouTube, where as it was being developed, the, the more shocking you were, um, the more accessible your things are, the more dumbed down your messaging, the more views you would get. So again, you have this sort of dumbing down of societies based on how the algorithm works. Uh, you, you see it on Instagram, I think, where the sort of degeneracy of effectively sort of young girls on Instagram um, sort of fighting for, for likes. And in essence, you, you, you kind of have this, this knock-on effect where you kind of keep crossing boundaries. So on one hand, you, you have that element of, but it doesn't mean, doesn't really mean because the, the, the left has been incredibly good at, at using these, these tools that the, the, the right and, and certainly Catholics can't use these tools to, to present their own message. And there are definitely ways of, of using, I mean, for example, there's a Catholic priest that I follow on TikTok, whose content I really enjoy, uh, who sort of uses these very short 30 second videos to, to, to present some, some fairly deep points, actually. So it is certainly doable, but there's perhaps just not enough Catholics using these these platforms in a way to spread the faith or conservatives using them to spread conservative values. I, I wonder though, Stefan, if it's, uh, because there are lots of Catholics on these platforms, um, uh, just as there are lots of people of various ideolo ideological shades of one, one sort or another. But, but you and I and Evo know that to use these platforms well and to use them effectively is a whole different ball game. And, and I, I ask both of you really, I mean, what, what is the challenge for the Catholic, for the conservative uh, filmmaker today? I mean, it, it's a challenge in my mind, and I throw this out as a, as a, is, is, is a challenge of creativity as opposed to message. 
And if that is the case, then how do we create uh, creative media platforms which, which, which actually allow the message to get across? I think it's more than that, actually. I, I think it's an issue of courage. I, I think in a world where youth has has n very little respect left for anything holy, where, I mean, you saw it on Twitter, there was a recent trend of a meme of, um, there was a photo of, of Pope Francis um, raising the Eucharist, and the Eucharist was being replaced with lots of other things. And it was a Twitter trend that was actually promoted by Twitter itself. When you see that, it effectively, it, it takes courage in a, in a world that no longer has respect and no longer understands sacrum. It, it takes courage to speak about these things, and it takes courage to speak about them in an environment that is dominated by entertainment, that is dominated by nihilism, by is dominated by by cultural relativism and and it's very very difficult to do it's difficult to talk about faith when you are sort of in a in a minority especially on an online environment and and the and the response to your faith to something that is incredibly important to you is so often disrespectful rude and and outright blasphemous so i think it's an issue of courage so evil if that if i mean that's an interesting point Stefan. and evil if we take is there a danger for the likes of ewtn or any catholic broadcaster where we we, we kind of preach to the converted we stay safe we we stay because really what i guess maybe Stefan and and, and his generation are saying is they they want full-blooded forthright catholicism blasting on all cylinders uh, coming out of ewtn and elsewhere i i think that ewtn is actually staying on that message uh, so I'm not, I'm not terribly worried about that um, uh, in, in this particular context. I think that the greatest danger is exactly that, watering, the, watering down or, or even worse. There is, the, uh, there is this uh, a very good, I think, Canadian uh, Catholic YouTuber, uh, Brian Holdsworth, uh, who has uh, actually produced an episode. Um, I strongly recommend his work. He produced an episode in which he was basically explaining that the worst thing that we can do is to pander to the the youth whatever sorry for the uh, for the air quotes uh, uh, because that will inevitably uh, uh, just kill the message for for a number a number of reasons you know. uh, uh, first of all they will immediately notice it uh, and not treat the messenger seriously uh, but it's also but it's also uh, um, you know, it, it actually hurts the messenger himself as well. So, so there are a number of reasons, but but I think that's 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 the most typical most typical danger. You know, uh, in the 60s, um, the church in Poland was uh, very much trying trying to fight off this this danger from from communism, which was claiming that it is the uh, the future, right? Yes. So. Uh, so uh, a lot of uh, a lot of priests turned to. Um, to, to attempting to show that the church is relevant and more modern than 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 the communists, right? So there were those uh, rock concerts in churches, right? Or what That's was right. called the big beat mass mm. uh, in, in the sixties, in order to to show, okay, look, we are actually more relevant than you than the commies are saying. Yes. Well, it never really worked. No. Uh, and if you, frankly, if you want to see a rock concert, you probably would. Uh, Nine of ten people would, would would go to a rock concert Correct. than to a church. Absolutely. If you want to go to a church, you go to because church. you have some void or need or a positive reason for that, you go to a church. So so yeah. Evo, you you pose a particularly interesting question, and I'm afraid a perennial one, which is that there are certain sections of the church. I'm afraid certain sections of the clergy that always want to appear relevant. Uh, and there's an English word uh, we use which is trendy and uh, it's pejorative uh, and nobody really takes it seriously, certainly not the demographic that it's aimed for. How do you ensure that EWTN Central Europe and indeed EWTN globally never falls into that very, very open pit? Uh, I think because, you know, uh, 
we've been there, we've done that. So, uh, in a sense, uh, in a sense, the uh, the experience of the uh, of the communist era uh, uh, had been uh, such that uh, the church had to, for a number of reasons, uh, show that it is uh, much. Uh, it's not anachronistic, right? Uh, as the as the communist propaganda was uh, was saying, and um, uh, and I think experience teaches us that this is not. This is not exactly the right path uh, to choose, and and if you stay faithful, if you stay orthodox in the in the right meaning of that word, yeah, orthodoxia, uh, then you uh, it doesn't matter if it's the uh, third third century, fourteenth century, or the twenty first century. You know, the the message is exactly the same, and we have to keep reminding ourselves that we are not really in the business of of new news, we are actually in the business of very old news, of news yes. that are about 2,000 years old, and they are not changing. This is about God and human nature. These Absolutely. things don't ch don't change. Absolutely, and what I, I'm reminded as you're speaking of uh, Mother Angelica, who there's a timeless quality, just as with the best film stars, there's a timeless quality. I mean, we still show her uh, programs here in the UK, even though they were made 30, 40 years ago, but there's a timelessness about her performance on screen because she's authentic. It's because what you see is what you get. And I think that's what really appeals to people of all ages, uh, old, young, and everything in between, authenticity. Well, Ivo, you and I are coming into the uh, platform here, the Euro Express. Stefan Thompson, our other guest from Poland, had to leave us a little bit early. Uh, he didn't throw himself off the train. He got off at an intermediate stop and headed off. He had another meeting to go to. But I want to thank you, Ivo, for taking the time once again to travel with us on this Euro Express. And I hope that you will become a regular passenger on this service. Uh, your insights into all that's happening with EWTN across uh, Europe is, uh, as always, fascinating and interesting. Thank you. It's, it's always an honor and a pleasure to be on the train. So uh, thank you so much. Evo, until the next time, goodbye. Goodbye.